I drink your milkshake. I drink it up. Don't bully me, Daniel. <laughs> There Will Be Blood is Paul Thomas Anderson's fifth film, starring Daniel Day-Lewis and Paul Dano. The script of the film is based on the book Oil by Upton Sinclair, although this is not entirely true, since Anderson only used the first 200 pages of the book. The movie could only have been the success story of an oil magnate in California, but Anderson did not miss the opportunity to show us more of his own vision. Daniel Plainview will not only face the problems of oil extraction itself, but on the way to the end of the film, we will be shown a transitional stage in the history of the United States and the world. The rise and establishment of the oil industry that forged billionaires like the renowned John Rockefeller. And how religion, being an important element within the culture of this country, will be questioned in the passage to the 20th century. To get to this point, the film will face Daniel Plainview and Eli Sunday, both egocentric and greedy men in reality, but with a different public image. A spoiler alert is deserved because this time we will analyze the American capitalism and the religion within there will be blood. Starting with the religious content, we set ourselves in the United States at the beginning of the 20th century when Daniel and his adopted son traveled to the Sunday family ranch. Here is the Church of Eli, and although the belief to which they belong is never literally mentioned, we know that it is some branch of Christianity. Historically the largest branches of Christianity within the United States have been Protestants and Catholics. But there is something Eli constantly mentions. The Third Revelation. His church bears that name, and in the movie script Eli refers to himself as the third revelation, although this part does not appear in the final cut of the film. To understand this easily it is worth reviewing this verse from the Bible. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. This and other verses have been interpreted as the third revelation from God. What have been the revelations of God has always been debated among believers. Some consider that the Bible is in itself a revelation of God, others that consider that God only revealed himself and Jesus when he came to earth. The third revelation is also another name by which spiritism is known, a doctrine that does not consider itself to be a religion, but does uphold the belief in God and is tolerant of other religions. A Christian, for example, could be both a Christian and a spiritist. This doctrine believes that the first revelation of God was through Moses with the tables of the Ten Commandments. The second revelation would be the arrival of Jesus on earth. And finally, the third revelation is given through any man who thanks to the Holy Spirit is capable of giving the teachings of God. This is where Eli comes in, a man who preaches the word of God and who acts as if he had divine powers, such as curing diseases or removing the devil from people. But in reality, Eli is a fraud and Daniel realizes it. One goddamn hell of a show. They are both egocentric and greedy, but Eli covers this part of him with his figure of prophet and shepherd. We see his egocentrism when he declares himself as the third revelation, when he tells Daniel to say his name after blessing the oil well, when he takes revenge on Daniel by humiliating him and slapping him in public. We know of his greed when he tries to get the most money out of Daniel when he buys his father's land. And another key event to discover his true intentions is after Daniel manages to build the pipeline to transport the oil. Eli says he is going on a supposed mission to Oildale, Taft and Bakersfield. These are all known locations for oil exploitation. We can connect this to the final scene where Eli tries to make himself look calm and serene, but little by little he loses his composure, revealing that he is desperate, letting it be seen between his words that his investments ended up being lost, destroying his financial situation. This reveals to us that it was not a mission to spread God's teachings. He actually went to oil-rich places to invest the money earned from the deal with Daniel, but he lost everything. Eli's hypocrisy not only ends there, but he was willing to blaspheme in order to get another deal with Daniel. I am a false prophet, God is a superstition. In other words, he transgressed his own religion in order to earn money. On Daniel's side, he is aware that Eli also wants to profit from oil, but he doesn't want anyone else to get his precious black gold, and he has no problem saying it. I have a competition in me. I want no one else to succeed. He does not believe in God probably because he feels that he did not need him to get to where he is now, he is a man who made his fortune thanks to his hard work. 
His desire for wealth is so relentless that he was willing to go through a baptism under Eli's church and pretend to accept God into his life. He also did not hesitate to use his adopted son to present himself as a family man when negotiating in order to generate more empathy and tip the balance in his favor. This is why it was so difficult for Daniel to say that he abandoned his son because it goes against what he has wanted to convey publicly. I've abandoned my child! I've abandoned my boy! A key scene in the family relationship is near the end of the film when his married adult son confesses that he plans to move away from his father and that he wants to start his own oil business. Given this, Daniel totally despises him and calls him a bastard. This proves two things about Daniel Plainview. The first is the obvious fact of his greed, of not wanting anyone else to succeed, and now that he earned enough money to get away from everyone, he no longer needs his adopted son. The second thing it shows is that Daniel gives importance to his own blood, his biological family. When his supposed brother appears, he soon becomes fond of him and even makes him part of the business, but as soon as he discovers that he was lying, he does not hesitate to kill him for being a fraud and cries when reading the diary of his real brother. It is because of this importance of blood that he had no problem despising his adopted son. The final scene is the point of connection between religion and American capitalism. It is here when Daniel claims to be the third revelation and not Eli. Daniel never believed in religion or in God, but he does believe that in the 20th century people will need more oil than religion. We can relate this to the arrival of the two world wars, where the demand for oil grew enormously. But beyond the wars, oil has established itself as one of the most profitable industries that offer economic and therefore political power. Daniel declares himself as the third revelation because he is the prophet of this movement, this transition where wealth and power are sought more than religion itself. This transition is also the passage from modernity to postmodernity that takes place in the 20th century, a movement in which the consumer industry is given more importance and where religions lose credibility. Daniel sets his vision in the future. He even mentions Paul, Eli's twin brother. He tells him that Paul is the true prophet because he knew how to see that oil was the key to success. Daniel is a clear example of a marked individualism, typical of postmodernity and neoliberalism. This last scene is also a catharsis event for Daniel. Eli behaves cynically, trying to make Daniel believe that they are old friends when in reality they are old enemies. Eli refers to Daniel as his family for being part of the same church. Once Daniel has accumulated enough anger, he attacks Eli, but Eli calls him brother. which is reminiscent of the biblical story in which Cain kills his brother Abel by hitting him with an object. Daniel's anger could have aroused not only because of Eli's cynicism and foolishness, but also because perhaps he always saw in him a reflection of his hypocrisy, a fraud, and he saw in him someone who wants to be economically successful, and Daniel would not let it pass. When viewing Daniel Plainview's story, it is inevitable to think about the concept of the American dream. The idea of freedom, economic prosperity and having a successful position in society, no matter where you come from or what socioeconomic position you have had. Daniel went from being a low-income miner to an oil magnate, but was left alone in the process. The title There Will Be Blood can have several interpretations, it can be taken literally, because in the process of getting the oil extracted, sooner or later, there will be accidents in which people lose their lives or end up injured it can be taken as a more metaphorical sense and think of blood as oil itself. Or even as a prophetic meaning, since after discovering the oil, violence and conflicts will be unleashed that end in bloodshed for monopolizing the oil. As it happened at the end of the film, and as it happens in today's world, where countries are invaded in order to obtain the precious black gold. That's all for today. If you liked it, don't forget to visit the channel and subscribe to support this content. Thank you very much for watching.